In this video, you'll discover my three-point approach to improving any website for higher conversions. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes, and as you can imagine, I spend a lot of my time looking at websites and looking at landing page designs and running tests and trying to figure out what can be done to improve the performance of a website or landing page. And in this video, what I've done is I've boiled that whole process and all that experience down into a three-step system that you can apply for your own website or for individual landing pages. These are the first three things that I look for in any landing page or website design. These are the three fundamental pillars of having an effective website that is able to convert. And these are the three points that you should always check before you deliver or publish a new page. So let's get started. Number one, the first pillar is take a look at the above the fold area of the website and ask yourself how clear does this make what this website is about. So we're looking for clarity above the fold. First of all, what is above the fold? That is technically the part of the page that someone sees without, without scrolling down. And right away you can tell, well, that's, that's pretty vague because we really have to consider many different screen sizes from large screens that may be st staying in someone's living room down to pocketable small phone screens. So what exactly is above the fold is really not clear. Even though there's no clear line where you can say, okay, this is above the fold, everything else is below the fold, it doesn't really matter. Think of it like this. If someone comes to your website and they only look at it for, let's say three to five seconds, then what do they see and does that tell them what this page and what this site is about? An important thing to keep in mind here is that the thing that trips us up is the curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge is that once you know something, it's impossible to imagine what it's like not knowing that thing. So you, as the creator of your website, will look at pretty much any page on your website and to you it's clear what that page is about and what your website is about because you already know that. So the trick here is you have to try and see your website through the eyes of a stranger. One of the easiest ways to do that is to get an actual stranger involved. It doesn't actually have to be a stranger, but you can get someone who has nothing to do with your website, nothing to do with your business. It could be your mom, for example, and get them to look at a page for a few seconds and then just ask them, well, what did you see? What does that tell you? What do you know now about this website that you didn't know before? And sometimes it can be quite eye-opening because we assume we take many things for granted that are just not clear to our visitors. So in this test, on your home page, people should be instantly able to see what your site is about, what market you're in, just so that people know whether they're in the right place or not, and give them an idea of what they can find here. And for all the other pages on your site, the page doesn't necessarily have to explain your whole business, right? That doesn't have to be the case everywhere, but that page has to be very clear right at the top to be very clear, what will I find on this page? The reader will come to this page asking themselves, should I keep reading? And that top section, the first few seconds, should give them an answer as to why they should keep reading. Step number two, look for how readable is it? How clear and easily readable is the typography? Because if you do step one right, you win someone over and they will start reading your content but if your text isn't readable, they will stop reading pretty soon. Really here, it's all about reducing friction. You don't wanna make it difficult to read your text. What I generally look for is 16 pixels or larger for the normal font, a good line height. You don't want the text to be super cramped, uh, but you also don't want too much space between the lines. You also want a very clear, uh, large, larger space between paragraphs so that it's clear to see you know, the difference between, the, uh, between just two lines of text and two actual paragraphs. So it's easier to have visual chunks, visual chunks of text on the page. You also wanna have large, easily readable, bold headings and subheadings on the page, which will guide the eye and make it easier to read. Also look for enough contrast. So having, you know, light gray text on a white background isn't great. It might look kind of stylish, but it makes it harder to read especially for people whose eyesight isn't perfect. And also having light text on a dark background makes it more difficult to read. Nobody wants to read a lot of text if it's light on dark. Now this is actually something that's easier to test even as the website owner. Read a lot of text 
in that font that you're using in with that typography that you're using make sure you read a lot of that text make sure you read every word on the page and if it's somehow you know if it strains your eyes or it's annoying for you or difficult for you then you know that typography needs to be improved so that's the second step once you get them reading make sure it's easy to read make sure it's highly readable otherwise you lose the visitors again and that brings us to step three which is the call to action where the question is how clear is the call to action or actually uh, let me call it the call to conversion goal so you have a conversion goal on a page and you want to have a clear call to that conversion goal and two things i look for first of all like i said how clear how bold how big is this on the page so quite simply you know a big fat large text orange button on the page that says click here to buy now is better than a tiny shy little uh, gray button somewhere in a corner okay so that's the first thing is like just how clear is it what I need to do for for getting to the next step in this conversion funnel but the second thing is look for conflicting calls to action so you'll have a main conversion goal and there might be some secondary goals, right? There might be uh, some secondary goals. Let's say you have a blog post where the main conversion goal is to get someone to subscribe and the secondary goal is to get them to perform a social share. Now it becomes problematic if we keep adding more. So maybe another one is you have like a Facebook follow me on Facebook thing and then another one is you have an ad for a premium offer and another one is you have some AdSense ads and the more of these possible conversion goals we pile onto a page, the weaker each one becomes. So you want to look at how many goals, basically how many directions is the reader being pulled into here, right? How many things are you asking them to do all at the same time? And is there a clear hierarchy? Because it's fine to have two or even three conversion goals on a page, two or even three things for the, for the reader to do, as long as there are, there's a clear hierarchy, it's like this is the number one thing, but then also maybe give us a social share and then also maybe do this other thing. But make sure that you're in control of how many things are you asking the reader to do and make sure that that number is small and the main goal, the main action is very, very clear. So those are my three steps for improving any website and any landing page. Number one, look for clear messaging above the fold in the first three to five seconds. Number two, make sure the text is easy and pleasant to read. And number three, make sure that there is a clear conversion goal and that there aren't too many other conflicting conversion goals. Sounds very simple and straightforward, because it is, and you'll be surprised how often these three steps will actually radically transform a page and also radically transform the results you can get with a page. So go ahead and apply those three steps to some of the most important pages on your site and then tell me what you found. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.